thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Today I'm going to work on another paper art doll and put it in my art journal. And this is a collaboration with Corrine. Um, this is her name, Corrine uh, Daney, and she is in the Etsy store called Download Queen Studio. I'll put the link in the description box below. She is from New South Wales in the UK, and this is her paper doll, and it's called the Gibraltar Mountain Fairy, and the fairy's name is Fern. And it says here, Fern is a Gibraltar Mountain Fairy. As her name suggests, she lives amongst the ferns high up on the Southern Highlands, famous Mount Gibraltar, and her famous time of day is early morning at sunrise. Her best friend, Shale, is a very cute baby ringtail possum. Together, they scope the jib, looking for adventures and enjoying the fresh mountain air. So it's going to be fun to decorate and put together this paper doll and then create a really fun background. Because she's from uh, Mount Gibraltar, I'm going to have mountains and ferns and trees and do a back scene. Um, I may even uh, do a little baby ringtail possum. There isn't one on the sheet, so I think I might add a baby ringtail possum because that's her best friend. I'm going to decorate her in a whole bunch of really fun ways. So let's get started and you can watch and see what I do. So the first thing I did was to print her on really good paper. I used watercolor paper um, because I think I'm going to even add a little bit of brightness and use some watercolor type uh, medias to brighten some things up and add some pops of color. So I printed it on to 140 pound. It's very, very heavy. It'll make it nice and stiff. And the first thing I'm going to do is obviously to cut out all the little pieces before I start decorating her. The image didn't come out quite as dark as I'd like because I used my own printer at home and I have just a simple inkjet printer. It usually does a great job, but I know I'm getting low on ink. Uh, one of the things you can do if you don't have a color printer and you want to do something like this is when you purchase an instant download and you get the file, you can save it to a little jump drive and uh, just load it onto that and take it to your local print shop like a Staples or um, any type of a print shop that does color printing. That's what I normally do is put them on that and take it to Staples and you can take your own paper. So if you have your watercolor paper or mixed media paper cut to eight and a half by 11, you can take it to Staples, give it to them. They'll print directly on it for you in color and the, it'll be a little bit more vibrant she turned out fine um, it's it's bright enough and it's such a pretty image this is a beautiful little kit so but I am still gonna bump up the color I like to use colored pencils neo colors um, Arteza brush pens things like that and I am gonna add some touches and highlights and bump up the color a little bit so for things like this like her boot I took my pen and I just made the sole of her boot a little bit darker using just a Tombow mono liner and uh, things like that. You can add little touches and make things a little bit darker. You can um, go in and add and change and do little uh, additions to the face, make the eyelashes a little darker, whatever floats your boat. So those are the kinds of things that I might do to this one since it printed a little bit light. The pieces are all cut out. So next I'm going to take some brush markers. I'm using uh, Ecoline brush pens to go around the edges and on her dress. I'm going to use a teal color to go along that edge just to get rid of that white edge and bump up the color a little bit on the side. So I'm going to take my pens and go around all the wings, the hair, the head, and just take that white edge away. So I'm just bumping up the color in her hair and on her little braids. She has little braids that you put put on with brad so her braids are going to be movable too which is really cute so here's what it looked like originally and here's what i've done to it and i'm just taking my uh, eco line brush pen this is a water soluble ink and i'm just going in and making some little brush marks on the braids where the braid goes under each other like that and at the end, and I'm not coloring the whole thing solid, and then I'm taking a water pen, a water brush pen, and I'm just blending that out because it's a water soluble ink. So it just made those braids a little bit more golden, see? Really cute. Now I'm taking some Tombow dual brush markers 
and um, a water brush and since I printed on to watercolor paper I'm just kind of bumping up the uh, tones in her face a little bit I'm just doing a little bit of shading and shadowing and adding just a little bit more depth to the color on her face So I went around the edge with my brush pan. This is in a deep ochre and I like it because it kind of looks antique-ish. And then I used a water brush to just blend it out a little bit. So it made really pretty edges around these wings. And the wings are like ferns and she did them very colorful with uh, kind of a teal and a, a teal blue and a little bit of a a purpley type of a color and a little bit of green some hints of green so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 crayons and a water brush and I'm going to just do go where she added the color and I'm just going to add a little bit more so I'm going to tip off the tip of my Neo Colors with a water brush and then come in here since I printed this on watercolor paper and it's very water soluble I can just come in here and spread it out where she has the blue and make it even more brilliant blue like that. So I'm going to add some purples just like she has. I'm going to use the colors that she used. I'm just going to enhance it a little bit and make it even a little more vibrant. And then I'm going to come back in with a white gel pen and I'm going to add some white highlights. I'm going to use some glitter ink because if she's a fairy, she needs to have a little sparkle. So just adding some pretty purples and some blues and bumping up the colors on these wings. Here's how the wings look with some bumped up color with my Neo Colors and I like it. They're really colorful and pretty. And if you look at the pattern on them, the fern pattern is kind of in a gold color. So I decided to take my gold Uniposca paint pen. This is in a, it's a PC1MR. So it's a pin tip, tiny little tip gold pen. And what I'm going to do, let me just zoom in a little bit here, is to recreate to go over the fern in gold. So all the fern is going to be gold. Let's see if you can see that. And then when I turn it, look at that, how that shines. It's going to be so pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and take my little fine point Posca and my gold pen and go over all the fern on all of the pieces to her wings and make the fern gold. Here's what they look like with their gold. Look at the gold when you turn it sideways. Isn't that pretty? I like that a lot. And now I'm going to take a fine point um, gel pen in white and there are a lot of really cute fine little white details and I'm going to just go over those again with a gel pen just to really make them pop. Because a gel pen will just bring out that white a little bit more. So I'm going to work on that a little bit and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Well the white accents really look good. I like that. I just went over what she already had on the wings with the fern fern in gold and gel pen in white. I just enhanced it a little bit is all. But it looks real pretty. I like the white. Makes it pop and I like the gold on the fern. Work on her shoes and I know you've already seen this in some of my other videos so it's not a new thing but it's just so cool that I think this one needs to have it too. Where I'm going to lace up those shoes. So here's the cute little boots. Let's see if I can get that to focus. Here's the cute little boot and it's got these cute little laces across. So what I'm going to do is to take my needle, I don't want to use my paper piercer because that will make too big of a hole, but I'm going to make a pre-hole in each one of these little places where the shoelaces come out. And then I'm going to get a strand of embroidery flash, just one single strand and I'm going to sew and lace this boot and I'll show you how. So here's a regular piece of embroidery floss and there's six strands so I think 
for the um, shoes that two strands would look good so I've just sectioned off two strands and you just twist it to separate out two strands from your six strand embroidery floss and then the four strands I'm going to use on her outfit together so I'll put that aside and I'm going to just put this on the needle and what I like to do is I don't tie a knot okay so I'm going to go in from the back side where I've made my little marks and that's why I make those little pre-marks see if you can see these so you can see where I poke the needle through it gives me an idea of where I need to be from the back side so I can go through this first hole and pull it through and then I'm going to just take a little dot of glue and put a little dot of glue and a little piece of tape to hold it in place. So the little dot of glue and the piece of tape anchors that down. And so what I'm going to do on these is just wrap it around to the back and then go in the next hole. Try not to get it tangled and then do it again. So I'm going to just wrap around, come over and into the next hole. So it's going to make the laces are going to be wrapped around the shoe. And I'm not pulling them very, very tight because that way you can move them into place better and you don't want to rip your cardstock if you're doing it on cardstock. So I'm really only going around to the back side. It's the only place I'm going in and just straight in. So those little Pre holes work great because then I can see exactly where I need to go. One more. And let's see what it looks like from the front. Flip it over and look what you've got. A cute little laced boot. So it's coming out the front, so I'm going to wrap it to the back and then again put a dot of art glitter glue and a piece of tape. Super cute. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the outfit and these crisscrosses here and I'm going to use the four strand so I'm going to change that out on my needle over into the four strands that I separated it from and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pre-poke the holes and then and then stitch this. So I'm going to pre-poke with my needle come through the back I think I'll start it right here at the top and then glue and tape The glue and tape just keeps it in place really well. Okay, and then I'm going to stitch this cute little stitching on her on her shirt. I just think these kind of little touches are so cute. So I'm going to go ahead and sew the crisscrosses. So here's what that stitching looks like on the, the outfit. That looks really cute. And down here are roses and little tiny rose petals. So there's little white roses and there's little white roses around the collar. And the little pockets are blue. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to not make the, the little flowers in white. I'm going to make them blue and I'm going to use embroidery floss. 
And I'm actually going to do an embroidery stitch, even though this is stitching into um, cardboard, technically. I mean, it's watercolor paper, but I'm going to do little French knot flowers. So what I want to do is right in the center of each rose, I'm going to poke my needle into my self-healing mat to make my little dot know where I need to come up with the needle. And I'm going to make a little French knot in each little hole along that edge. So for the first one, I'm going to come up from the back and do my same starting thing where I glue that down with a dot of art glitter glue and a little piece of scotch tape just to hold it in place. To anchor that thread. Okay, so now it's anchored to the back. So with a French knot, when you come up, what you want to do is put your needle down by the cardstock and you're going to wrap three times with the floss. One, two, three. And you hold it kind of like this as close as you can get keep your finger on the little strands and then you're going to go right back into that hole and carefully pull it through and when you do it's going to make a cute little french knot so i'm going to do french knots all the way across so i'll show you again you're going to go from the back to the front in the next dot that you made, the little pre-holes, to start your next flower like that. And I'm never pulling them tight, just loose. And then you're going to make three, wrap three times around your needle. And then you're going to go back into that hole. And pull through real slow, holding the three strands in place, and you end up with a really cute little knot. So there you go. I'm going to do French knots in blue all around here and all around this collar. So how cute is this? French knots at the bottom, French knots around the corner, a collar. I left the top open because that's where you put the head and the head was going to move so you don't want to put French knots all the way around. You want to leave a space but look at the it looks like it's the collar goes behind her. Oh they're so cute. I love them. So that was a fun way to add some interest and dimension and now I'm going to take uh, a green Ecoline brush pen and on the little leaves let me lift it up closer so you can see where the little leaves are, I'm going to just bump up their color and make them even more green. And look how cute that is. Super cute. I love my little border. Turned out so fun. So on her little pockets down here, she's got little tulips. And I'm going to do some embroidery stitches in those as well. So I bet you never thought about doing embroidery on paper. And I think the key to it is to just put your pre-holes in with the needle so that you don't tear the paper. And then you just do your embroidery stitches like you normally would for regular embroidery. So in the little pockets there, the color is red, but since there's purple on her wings and there's really no other red, I'm going to change them to purple flowers and use some purple embroidery floss. And I'm using six strand. This was six strand. And the little flowers are going to be six strand too. So I'm going to just come up in this, this section down here. In this first little hole that I've made. Right there. I'm going to come up in that first. Do my tape down and glue down on the back side. I hope this is giving you a fun new idea of something to try. 
It's fun to sew on paper and it's fun to stitch on paper with embroidery floss. And you just come up with some really, really pretty designs. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to this tip of this flower over here and just go in that hole that I made. I'm going to come up in the same spot I started and go to the second one. Come up in the same hole I started and do the third one. And that makes a purple stitched flower. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So there are the little purple flowers stitched. I put a little green stem at the bottom. So that's, I'm done with the embellishments on her outfit, I think, for now. And I'm going to put that aside. Now I'm ready to assemble her and I'm using a paper piercer. And I've got a bunch of different mini brads that I'm going to use. So for the one to attach her head to her body, I'm going to put that in place where it needs to go. And then poke my hole through both. So I'm poking through two layers. And then I'm using a brad for that one that has a jewel in the center. So it'll look like a diamond. Kind of like a diamond on her necklace. They're mini brads. Back from my scrapbooking days. I have a jar of mini brads that has all different kinds. So I'm putting a jeweled one on her neck. And that holds her head in place and her head is movable. And positionable. And then for the braids on her hair, same thing, you want to put them in place where they're going to go. And then poke your holes through both spots. And I'm using a little dark mini brad for attaching the braids. I think I'm going to put the braid behind, put the brad in the front and the braid in the back. Let me see how that looks. And you definitely have to use mini brads on this kit because she's kind of tiny so there. So that does the braid and the braid is movable. Super cute. Okay so I've put the legs together with their brads and you can just poke a hole through the body and attach the legs like that and you'll have little brads on the front and the legs moving. But I'm going to make one of my little hidden pieces for attaching the legs. And how you do that is to just take a piece of card stock and I'm using that same that I printed her out on. I'm laying this down and I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to just draw like this and then connect it like this and cut this piece out and I'm cutting it slightly just slightly shorter than what I drew so that it doesn't show. Okay, now I'm going to poke a hole here and here and at the top of the legs where the little spot is indicated where you put the brad in. And I'm going to put this together like this. So the brads will be attached, or the legs will be attached to that little cardboard piece that I created. This is going to just make them completely behind the doll but still movable. And then you just apply glue only along that outside edge on each side. And put this back into place. And then you're going to want to just hold that until the glue 
holds, which with art glitter glue is really quick. So that's what it looks like from the back. You've got that little piece that you created. And on that piece, you can move the legs and you don't see them because they come out from behind her body. Okay, so that, I like that. That looks good. And since she's a fairy and fairies are ethereal, I love to add tulle to them. So what I'm going to do is to just take some little pieces of this tulle and it is kind of a minty green color, the same color that her dress is. And I'm going to just cut a little piece of it. And I'm going to tear it into little strips. If you make a slit and you tear, you get a nice little piece. So I'm going to cut a bunch of those, uh, maybe, maybe six. Not too wide. They don't have to be big. It's just to add a little bit of something something to make her look ethereal like a fairy. Let me do one more. Let's do an odd number. Okay, so I've got my little pieces and I'm going to just turn her over and I could have done this before I put glued her little body place on for her legs, but that's okay. It's not in the way. So I'm going to just take these pieces and kind of fold them in half to make like just a little bit of a loop and put some art glitter glue along that edge and glue it into place just like that. Nothing too hard, nothing too complicated. Go over a little ways, do another one, kind of pull it, make a loop. Glue it into place. And I'm going to glue those all along that edge. So here's what it looks like from the back side. And then when I flip it over, look how cute that is. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. See how that tool just added a nice, beautiful little layer. It makes it whimsical and ethereal. Love it. So she cute. Looks so pretty all put together with her little mini brads. And... Her wings, you can position her wings, you can position her arms, you can move her hair, which is kind of fun. So now what I'm doing is taking a little tiny piece of that tool and I just cut it in a very, very, very skinny strip. And when you pull it, to kind of make it spread out a little bit, I'm taking it and tying it around the end of her little braid as like a little hair tie that is tool that matches the tool around her skirt. So I'm just going to tie that on to the end of her braid and knot it. And then kind of trim it a little bit. So it made a cute little hair tie on the end of her braid. Super cute. I love it. I love the embroidery on her outfit and her little jewel on her neck. Well, she looks really cute. Uh, the only thing she's missing, in my opinion, for all fairies, they need glittery wings. I'm going to take my favorite thing that I use for making sparkle, which is Spectrum Noir Glitter Ink. This is in the clear one. And just shake it up a little bit. Use a paintbrush. You just kind of dip it in and brush it on. And so I'm going to just brush it onto her wings and add some sparkle. Fairies have to have sparkle on their wings. I mean, let's face it, they're ethereal, they're fantasy. So just a little bit of sparkle. I'm not brushing it too meticulously because it will um, move the gel pen and the neo color that's on there. So I'm just kind of dabbing it on in some places. That is super pretty. Let me show you what that looks like up close. See if you can see there. See the sheen and the sparkle? It just gave her some really pretty sparkle on her wings. 
Might even put a little bit on her outfit too. Why not? She's a fairy. She needs some sparkle. Let's make her outfit sparkle. Okay. To so see that pretty sheen. That's why I love that glitter ink. It doesn't really do anything other than to just add sparkle sheen. So she looks pretty good. I like her a lot. I love her little laced up boots. Um, let's see, I think down here on her legs, I'm going to take my gold pen that I used on her wings and I'm going to make these swirlies gold and just bump those up a little bit with some gold. That looks fun. Same with up here. It's just all about adding little fun details. Anything you think might make it look pretty. So added gold on those swirls. She looks pretty good. I'm going to use some Nuvo Drops in glitter. This is Sunlit Meadow, which is perfect for her, especially since that's her favorite thing. Our Sunlit Meadows in the morning. So I'm going to just add some Nuvo decorations. They're going to sparkle and add some glitter too. Let's add some on her arms. Super cute. So she's pretty fancy. And I realized that her boots had those little roses on it too, so I added my little French knot roses to the tops of her boots. I used a different color of um, embroidery floss instead of the blue. I used kind of a lighter color. And since she is a woodland fairy and she is out in nature, I'm taking some of these little embellishments I have that are paper leaves and I'm going to put them behind her head and make a crown of leaves behind her head. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue around the back edges here of the leaves. And then just place them behind her head and let them dry. Just to give her more, even more of an appeal of her being an outdoor woodsy wood, woodland fairy. And those leaves that aren't going to show, I might as well trim those off so I can use them somewhere else. And then just tuck it behind. Not too many, but just a few. Those little paper leaves just look super cute. And then I can take a couple extra ones and put them some other places too to embellish her, just to make her look more woodlands. I love what the paper, little paper leaves added, and I added a paper flower, and I did a little, um, one of my French knots that matched these French knots on her boots, so that would tie that in together. And I added a piece of um, fern in her hand because that's her name, fern. And the fern, this fern came from um, cutting that out of out of a, my off of my Cricut machine a long, long ago. I don't remember which cartridge creates it, but now I'm taking a blue Uniposca colored pencil, and it's almost the same blue as the little French knots that I did. And so I'm just going around, and I'm going to add a little bit of blue highlight here and there just to tie those the wings into the colors that are on her little outfit. I'm just weird like that, that if the color is one place, it needs to be another place. So um, I'm adding just a little touch of that royal blue, and it looks really fun. Just kind of using a light touch and blending it, but look at adding a little bit more blue to those wings just draws it in and ties it in with the blue French knots. And I know you don't have to do this on yours. This is just what I'm doing and I'm just giving you ideas of how to play, how to make it fun, how to change it up a little bit and make it special and make it your own. When you buy these kits, everybody has the same kit, so when you do it a little bit different, it just 
you're adding your own artistic flair to it and when you put it in your art journal especially it just makes it really special and unique so that's what I like to do but you can decorate yours any way you want if you decide to get one and play along um, also the artist has put given me a code to put into my description so if you would like a discount for purchasing this fun paper doll kit you can get it at a discount so look for that in the description box where there will be a link of where you can purchase this there will also be um, a code for Etsy that you can use at checkout at Etsy in her shop so there we go look at that yes 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 the blue on the wings just made it come together She's got sparkle in her wings and glitter and sewn things and embroidered things and the little leaves added something. Her little laced up boots. She's super cute. Love it. Turned out great. What a pretty paper doll this is. Super cute. So now I'm going to make an art journal page to put her on and since she is um, from the Southern Highlands famous of uh, famous Mount Gibraltar and she um, loves ferns you know her name is fern i'm going to do a background that has mountains and trees and fern and make it um, forest like and then i'm going to see if i can find a baby ringtail possum photo on the internet to print out on cardstock and cut out and have that in the picture too since um that is her little pal so I let's went on the internet and i found this little picture of someone holding a baby ringtail possum and I copied it and pasted it into uh, Microsoft Word, shrunk it down to the correct size and I printed it on cardstock. And now what I'm going to do is cut it out and I'm going to glue it onto her hand so it looks like she's holding the little baby ringtail possum because that is in the story that the creator of this paper doll wrote, she put that there's a baby ringtail possum that's her best friend and his name is Shale. So gotta have that in there. So I'm adding the little ringtail possum. How cute is that a little critter? He's adorable. Okay. And I'm going to just touch up the edges so they're not white. And I'm going to put it on her hand. I'll kind of tuck it under her sleeve here and glue it in place like she's holding it. Just like that. Oh, that's so cute. I'll zoom in and show you. So there's her little friend, the ringtail possum. So for my background, I want to create a scene. I've got a rubber stamp of some mountains. I've got a bunch of trees, rocks, things that would be out in nature, some fern, which is great, some stamps of fern. And about a million years ago, I used to teach rubber stamping classes. So these stamps, I laugh at the date on them, 1997. Uh, 1997 most of them are going to be around this is 1993 so they're oldies but goodies but they're in my stash I kept all my stamping stuff and I just thought these would be a great way to kind of build up a scene to put her into so I'm going to play around with this and fingers crossed that I'll be able to pull it off I found two pages in my large ranger delusions book that don't have anything on the other side of them so that'll make them nice and flat to be able to put a nice hard book behind them and try to stamp right on the page so this is going to be tricky and I don't know if I can pull it off or not but I'm sure going to give it a try because I have an idea and would love to see it work it'll be a great practice on using stamps in your art journal and I'm going to use acrylic paints over the stamps to color the images and and um, tie them all in together. Hopefully I could do this. So first thing I'm going to do is stamp my mountains. I'm going to ink them. Make sure I ink them really well. I prime them first by rubbing and then I pat. That way the ink sticks really well to your stamp. 
And now I've got a hard book behind it. And I'm going to see if I can get a good image. I hope so. And if not, I can always come back in with pens or paints. Yep, see it didn't it didn't stamp well in the middle. Let's see if I can line it back up. Nope. No! Okay, let's try it again. Push from the other side. It's hard to stamp in your journal, in your art journal. It's easier to stamp on. There we go. I rubbed it from the back side so it worked. In fact, I think I'll do that with all of them. It's, um, it's not easy to stamp in a journal and get a good stamped clean image. You can stamp it on cardstock. I could have stamped it on plain cardstock, cut out everything, and then laid it all out, but I don't really want to do that. It's going to be, that's too much work. And they don't have to be perfect. They're mountains. It's trees. It's branches. You can always paint leaves over the top. You can always add color to it. So... I'm not looking for perfection. It's an art journal and it'll be just fine. So let's do it again. Rub the back and see if I can get a good image. Yes. Cool. So I've got some mountains going. And that's in the story. And then I'm also going to add some trees. I want this cool rocks and things. And I think I'm going to put that here because I'm going to have her standing on the rocks. Yeah, so that's where those are going to go. So let's stamp those into place. These were really fun stamps by a company called Stampscapes and they were all gorgeous outdoor scenery. And they used to go to the stamping conventions and they would teach how to create these beautiful greeting cards with these scenes where you stamp them and color them and they look just totally realistic. Watercolor painting them and things. They're just so pretty. Skies and all kinds of things. Okay, let's try and get a good image on this. And I'm just going to press the back of it. Good, 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 good. That's good, because I can bump it up with more ink. And so I'm just going to come in and add some trees along the sides. And I'm just going to keep building it up with all kinds of imagery. And then, like I said, I'll come back in with acrylic paints and paint around these things to make it look even better, hopefully. I'm going to put a tree right here. I hope that's straight. I don't think it is, but that's okay. Good. Looks good. So I'm going to keep adding, adding some trees and adding some different things to this. And, um, the fern, I have an idea for adding a bunch of fern to the page, so I'm going to show you that fun idea. And I'll come back and show you what it looks like as I get more stamping on here. And if you have something that's already stamped and now you want something else behind it, all you have to do is take your paper and lay it down and you can kind of see that edge. Cut that out just rough. Doesn't have to be perfect at all and then you lay it back down over this as a protector so now you can take your stamped stamp and stamp with it and it ends up behind the image isn't that cool easy to do and it protects your page so that Now it looks like those trees are behind those rocks. So here's a lot of stamping. It looks a little bit chaotic right at the moment, which is quite all right. 
I'm just going to come back in here and I'm going to do some painting and some doodling and tie it all in together and it'll look perfectly fine. So I'm going to start up at the top here. I'm just going to add some light blue paint, some light blue acrylic. That was probably way too much. Definitely way too much, but that's okay. And a baby wipe and I'm just going to spread it out. And since I'm using a baby wipe and it goes over the edge of the trees and the mountains and things, it's pretty. It just looks like it's misty sky. And it's just an art journal page. So, you know, it's not a work of art that you're going to try and sell. It's in your art journal. I'm just playing and having fun and creating a background to put that cute paper doll. So I don't really care if it's absolutely perfect. Down here at the base of the mountains, I'm going to dab in the paint to make it look misty. Just dab in some blue paint up to the edge so it maybe it'll look like some fog even. I might even um, go back over it with some white and do the same thing to make it look foggy. So I'm just getting some in there in between those tree branches just adding in a little bit of color to tie in these stamps. See, and already that looks better. And her favorite time of morning, her favorite time of day is morning. So I'm going to just take a tiny little bit of paint here. Just a dab. Some orange. And then some yellow. And I'm going to do finger painting and just create illusion of the sun awesome so there's my sunshine coming up over the mountains I'm going to add a little bit of color to the rocks using Arteza brush pens in some grays and a little bit of a brownish color and I'm just going to really crazy kind of just blend out a little bit on here and it's just to bring in a little bit of color so it's not plain I'm not trying too terribly hard if you can see I'm just adding some cast colors to make them look more like rocks Some lighter at the top, some darker on those shaded, shaded areas. My dog is throwing a fit. I'll be right back. I'm just kind of putting on the ink and spreading it a little with my finger. Doing some shadows. the base of this tree. Let's put some shadow down there so it's not sitting out in the middle of nothing. Same with these. And these. Landscape is pretty easy because you can just come in and Kind of doodle around like this and I'm going to add in some brownish color. I like these Arteza brush pens. They're not expensive but they sure are fun to use. So see how that's just kind of coming together. And for the trees, 
I can take a black Posca pen, come in here and sketch in more branches that are a little more prominent. And the trunk of the tree a little bit better. And same with this big branch up here that's coming out from the side of the page. I'm come in here with my Posca pen and define that better. And you know, Posca is acrylic paint in the pen, so while it's wet, you can take your finger and blend it out. And it looks kind of cool. So I'm just following along these branches, kind of redrawing them in a little bit darker, and then I'm going to come back in with some green paint and put in those leaves. But I want the branches to be a little darker. My ink didn't stamp as dark as I'd like, plus I put some paint over it, so you can just come back in and redo it, redarken it, like that. Now I've taken some acrylic paint. I'm using these two beautiful colors by um, Chroma Jo Sonia paints. I got them for Christmas and they're so pretty. I love them. And I'm taking some mm. Q-tips together like this and I'm just going to dip them and start adding leaves to the trees. Looks super cool, super easy. It's just sticking in the paint and patting it onto your page and look at what you end up with. You end up with a beautiful little branch of leaves. And then I'm going to come back in with the darker color and add some darker. Probably should have done darker first, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. So look how easily that rubber stamp gave me the basis of what to go on. And then a little Posca pen and some q-tips and some paint and look what I've got here. A nice little branch that's overhanging those mountains. Super fun. So I'm going to do that same thing to the other two trees that are just like it and to these down here as well. I'm going to um, add some paint into these same thing on the um, pine trees coming in and just tapping across those trees. Kind of following the design that's already there.
to add color to those trees. Now I'm using some Arteza brush pens in greens and I'm going to come in here and add some green where there's little bits of green grasses and things growing up between the rocks. Just kind of filling in some of those little details. I think I've showed you in the last video how to make some grass and I can come along here and add some grass. Some little grass strokes. So it's just bringing it together and filling it in and then there's going to be words on the page and the girl, the uh, fairy on the page too. So I don't want the whole thing completely done, but you, I want it semi-filled in and tied together. So I'm going to just keep playing around and I'll show you periodically what so I'm I've doing. I've got the background about where I want it for right this minute and I'm going to kind of move it aside and I want to add this fern to the page all over the place because her name is Fern and there needs to be Fern everywhere. I don't want to stamp on the page because it won't be solid enough and I don't want to do it on cardstock and then have to trim out a ton of these little intricate ferns. So what I'm going to use instead is tissue paper. Tissue paper like you would use for um, gift wrapping. I'm just going to take Ranger Archival ink in olive and my stamp with the fern and I'm going to stamp right on the tissue paper a bunch of fern images so I've got several different kinds and I'm going to stamp a bunch all over the tissue paper. I filled the page with leaves and I did a couple of them also in leaf green so there's two different shades and I completely let the ink dry you have to be sure that the images you stamp are completely dry. Now what you want to do is take your water brush and just like when you do napkin collage, if you get this paper wet around the image like this with a water brush, then you can easily tear the image out like such. So what I want to do is just wet around each one and tear each one out roughly like that. Next I'm going to take my uh, matte gel medium. I like Tri Art. You can use any kind and a brush and I'm going to apply figure out where I want this image. So if I want it right there right here. Let's put it right here. I'm going to add some matte medium to the page and then put this into place carefully and then gently brush matte medium over the top of it. The tissue paper is going to blend away. You will hardly even see it. And you end up with the fern image on your page. Look at how fun that is. So I'm going to go ahead and um, tear out with water, remove all these images, and I'm going to use my matte gel medium and put the fern everywhere just like I did right here. So there's my background. I love all the fern everywhere because that's her name. She's going to go right here and look how cute that is. It's really cute. It's prettier in person but it looks really really fun on the page. And what I decided to do instead of using this printout, I'm going to write what's on here in journaling up here in the sky and below. So right here I'm going to go ahead and put Fern and put her story and do that in my um, with Posca. So I've added the words to the page. I put um, I'm a Gibraltar mountain fairy. My favorite time of day is early morning at sunrise. I live amongst the ferns high up on the southern highlands of Mount Gibraltar. My best friend is Shale, a baby ringtail possum. Together we go looking for adventures and enjoying the fresh mountain air. So I added my writing and journaling into the background of my page. I've glued my doll down and I've only glued her down just on her body so you can move her arms. You can position her arms and her wings and her hair and her legs they can all be moved which is really fun 
super cute. And I cut out the word fern and I'm going to put that right here. So I'll put her name um, or right here in the tree. I think I'm going to put it up here and then I'm going to um, go around that just with some color. But I think what I'm also going to do is to take some Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 and there. No, I don't like it up there. I'm going to put it right here. Okay, and then I'm going to take some Neo Color 2 in a blue. I'm going to use blue turquoise and cobalt blue. And I'm going to just go around and bump up the color. So I'm going to color around this edge of the mountains to make them stand out. And then just use my finger to blend it out. And then it's also going to make those words stand out a bit too. So I'm just going to add some color to the page where it's too washed out and some color, a little bit of color behind her to make her pop a little bit more. So the fairy kind of disappears into the page and I love the background and the scenery, but it's, it's taking away the beauty of the fairy. So what I think I'm going to do is take some pan pastel and a little pastel blender and I'm taking the darkest blue that I have and I'm going to go behind and make a just blend it out behind her flip it over so I can go lighter I get a gradient and put a really nice blue cast behind her I really think that that's see that's going to make her stand out a lot more so I'm adding blue behind her I think I'm going to add some pastel to the sky, Some there's some greens, so I'm going to add some greens in this uh, ground and just keep playing around with it a little bit. So here's the finished page and I added some uh, doodling and uh, worked on the lettering a little bit, added the dark blue highlight behind her, which I love. It makes her stand out much, much, much better and she's so pretty. So I hope you enjoyed this and had fun doing this with me or watching me do this, um, create this page, making this beautiful paper doll named Fern and, and creating this fun uh, background page to put her on in my art journal. I'll put the link to the Etsy store that I collaborated with on this page that made the paper doll and her discount. So if you're interested in purchasing this beautiful paper doll kit yourself, there will be a link that will take you directly to that So and to that Etsy shop. So thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. I hope you make something fun in your art journal. I hope this gave you some ideas for something to do, maybe uh, stamping on tissue paper and using it for collage, um, using pastels, rubber stamps, just uh, sewing and doing embroidery on a paper doll. Just some new and fun ideas. Hope you had fun. Go make some art because art soothes the heart. Mm -hmm.